years. We're living through a remarkable era of innovation and technology, but we're not the first generation to think so. Travel back a hundred years, and you'd find people equally astonished by the automobile as we are today by cutting-edge wireless communication. Go even further into the past, and you'll discover brilliant inventions that continue to astonish us. In this video, we're honoring those forgotten inventors whose creations modern science still can't replicate. Number 15. Nepenthe. The ingenuity of ancient Greek and Roman medicine still manages to surprise us, particularly when it comes to treatments for emotional pain. Among their remedies was Nepenthe, an early mood stabilizer known for its ability to lift sorrow. The drug appears in Greek texts, including Homer's Odyssey. Some believe it was mythological, but others are convinced Nepenthe was real and widely used. According to legend, it originated in Egypt and was so crazily potent, it was referred to as a drug of forgetfulness. Now let's say its effects have drawn comparisons to opium or laudanum. Like many ancient treatments, it's possible Nepenthe still exists under another name, we just haven't recognized it. If the substance truly existed then we're likely still using it today in a modern form. Historians frequently point to opium, but other candidates include wormwood extract and scopolamine. Whatever Nepenthe really was, it shows how far ancient pharmacology had progressed, and how easily a name can disappear even when the medicine survives. Number 14. Stradivari Violins One of the great missing techniques of the 18th century is the method behind crafting the great Stradivari violins and other string instruments made by the Stradivari family in Italy between 1650 and 1750. These violins, along with a few violas, guitars, and cellos, were prized in their time but have since become globally famous for their unmatched sound. Today, only about 600 of these instruments remain, each worth hundreds of thousands. Stradivari has even become a symbol for anything considered the absolute best in its category. The technique behind their creation was kept within the family, passed down by Antonio Stradivari to his sons, Francesco and Obabono. When they died, the process vanished. Researchers have tried to replicate the effect, studying the wood's density, fungal exposure and body design. One popular theory is that the rare wood used was responsible for the unique tone, but some argue the instruments aren't so special, and blind tests suggest most people can't tell them apart from modern violins. Number Dryson. Arkham Furnaces. In Russia's Chelyabinsk region, within the Bredinsky district, is Arkham, a fortified settlement that dates back 7,000 years. It's recognized for its ancient ceramics and bronze craftsmanship, but the true marvel lies in its advanced furnace systems. Producing molten bronze at that time wasn't simple. It required extreme and consistent temperatures, something Arkham's furnaces were built to deliver. Each furnace stood beside a well for water access and included a vertical shaft cooled by circulating air. A network of ground-level air tunnels fed flames and enabled the furnaces to surpass 1,500 degrees Celsius. That's enough to melt bronze and even smelt copper with ease. These structures are sometimes referred to as miracle furnaces due to their natural airflow, cold air rising and hot air dropping, a system still not fully understood even with today's scientific models. Tests show it works but explaining why remains a challenge. Arkham's engineers didn't just master metallurgy, they built systems centuries ahead of their supposed limitations. Number 12. Apollo and Gemini Program Tech. Not all lost technologies come from ancient times. Some just fall out of use. Like the systems behind NASA's Apollo and Gemini missions. Running from the 1960s into the early 70s, these programs were responsible for everything from the first manned orbits to the moon landing. Gemini handled early experiments in human spaceflight. Apollo followed with the ambition to land on the lunar surface, which it accomplished in July 1969. Today, a few Saturn V rockets and module parts still exist, but surprisingly little documentation remains. Because NASA was racing against the Soviet Union, timelines were rushed, and records were loosely kept. Most components were designed by outside contractors, and when the programs ended, their engineers and their notes disappeared. That loss is now an obstacle. 
NASA has since had to reverse engineer existing equipment just to understand how things worked. It's a strange irony, we've been to the moon, yet much of the knowledge used to get there was never archived properly. Number 11. Tell Harmonium. Thaddeus Cahill introduced the Tell Harmonium in 1897. It was a massive organ-like electronic instrument that generated sound using to new wheels and transmitted music through telephone wires. Often recognized as the first electronic instrument, it featured an array of foot pedals and keyboards that allowed players to mimic the tones of instruments like flutes, clarinets, and bassoons. One version of the Tell Harmonium reportedly weighed 200 tons and filled an entire room. The sound it produced was described as smooth and rounded, resembling a sine wave. Early demonstrations attracted large audiences, captivated by its synthetic tones. Cahill hoped the device could provide background music in public spaces like hotels and restaurants by broadcasting over phone lines. But the machine's high energy demand strained existing power grids. Costing $200,000 to build, it was also far too expensive for mass production. Its audio signals often interfered with phone calls, frustrating users. Eventually, public interest faded, and all three original models were dismantled. No recordings or physical remains survive today. Number 10. Silphium. Silphium was a prized botanical remedy in ancient Rome, mainly known as one of the earliest forms of birth control. Derived from a now extinct species of giant fennel, the plant only grew in a narrow stretch of coastline in present-day Libya. Its heart-shaped fruit was so valued that it was featured on Roman coins. Silphium was a multi-purpose treatment, used to relieve fevers, digestive problems, and skin conditions. But its most sought-after property was its use in contraception and, if timed correctly, early abortion. Women would consume its juice periodically, and Roman writers praised its effectiveness. But its rarity was also its downfall. Silphium couldn't be cultivated, it only grew in one region, and overwhelming demand likely led to its extinction. Today the species is gone, making it impossible to test its chemical makeup or fully understand its effects. Similar herbs still exist, some with proven contraceptive properties, but Silphium's exact abilities and its extinction remain a pharmaceutical mystery. Number 9. Library of Alexandria. Well, the Library of Alexandria wasn't an ancient tool or a machine, but its loss marked one of the greatest erasures of ancient knowledge. Established in Alexandria, Egypt, around 300 BCE, likely during Ptolemy Soter's rule, it aimed to gather all known information from across the world. Scholars like Xenodotus and Aristophanes of Byzantium worked there, and estimates suggest it held up to one million scrolls. Travelers arriving in the city were allegedly required to surrender their books so copies could be archived in the collection. The library was intended as the ultimate intellectual repository of its age. Its destruction is still debated. One documented theory holds that Julius Caesar accidentally set it ablaze during a naval battle when fire from his ship spread to the docks and then to the library itself. Other accounts attribute the damage to later figures such as Emperor Arayan, Theodosius I, or Amr Ibn al-Az. Regardless of the cause, the loss was enormous, and what vanished with it will never be fully known. Number 8. Plasticine Rocks in Peru Peru is packed with remarkable archaeological locations, and sadly, Chenco is one that often gets passed over. That's unfortunate, because it appears to hold physical evidence of ancient stone softening methods far beyond anything we understand today. The stones look as though they were hand-molded and shaped, which is why they're nicknamed plasticine rocks. Many show one side that's smooth and glossy, while the other side features neat lines and curves that resemble finger impressions. It gets even more bizarre when you study the massive monoliths at Chenko. Shaped like enormous chairs, their purpose is completely unknown. These two appear to have been formed from soft material, almost as if they were molded from wet clay, not chipped with chisels, or shaped using carving tools. Could our ancestors have known how to temporarily soften stone? And if so, how did that technique vanish without a trace, especially in an age where we're still trying to replicate it with all our advanced tools and research? Number 7. Priya Vihir Temple. 
Prevahir Temple clings to the top of a cliff in the Dangrek Mountains of Cambodia, defying both gravity and the expectations of what ancient builders could accomplish. Though a sanctuary existed on the site as early as the 9th century, the present temple was constructed atop those older foundations during the 11th century. It's believed that Khmer kings from the Surya Varman dynasty aimed to rival the beauty of Angkor's famous temples. The temple forms a complete complex, aligned perfectly on the edge of a high ridge near the Thai border. In fact, Thailand was so captivated by Preah Vihir that it contested Cambodia's claim in a legal battle that reached the International Court of Justice in 1962. Cambodia ultimately won. Yet even today, no research has conclusively explained how this masterpiece was engineered. The construction methods remain a mystery. This site stands not only as an architectural marvel, but also as a testament to the territorial tensions and cultural prestige embedded in ancient stone. Number 6. Bad Gears. When summer heat strikes, you're grateful for the comfort of air conditioning. But it raises the question, what did people rely on before this modern luxury? In ancient Egypt and Persia, the answer was the bad gear, or Malkoff. A few of these ancient ventilation towers still exist today, and some researchers argue they're more efficient than any modern cooling unit. Invented over 2,000 years ago, bad gears looked like tall chimneys and functioned continuously without requiring electricity. As long as they remain structurally intact, they needed no maintenance. Their upper vents pulled in fresh air, circulating it through entire buildings while forcing warm air out and cooling interior walls in the process. When built on a large enough scale, these systems could even cool water storage areas beneath the floors. Modern air conditioners might feel more convenient, but ancient Persians achieved the same effect without wires, machines, or energy bills. In terms of sustainability and design, they were centuries ahead of their time. Number 5. Ancient Egypt Crystal Rock Lenses Ancient Egyptian statues and sculptures rank among the world's most striking and intricate, but many of them are missing one incredible detail they once had. Several of these historic figures originally featured eyes crafted from crystal rock including rhinestone lenses that gave them a hyper-realistic appearance. These ancient eyes were so precise they reflected the fine structure of human capillaries and could even shift in color depending on the viewer's angle, giving them an illusion of life. The challenges of carving and finishing these lenses thousands of years ago can't be overstated. Today we'd need specialized polishing and grinding equipment to achieve a similar result. But back then? We're still in the dark about how craftsmen did it. That level of clarity and precision shouldn't have been achievable using only primitive tools. One of the best surviving examples of this lost skill is found in the wooden statue of Kaiper now preserved in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, a masterpiece of detail and craftsmanship. Number 4. Temple of Khafre. Let's stay in Egypt for a moment and talk about the Temple of Khafre on the Giza Plateau, close to the Sphinx. This structure went completely unnoticed until 1852, when it was found beneath layers of sand that had preserved it for centuries. It stands today as one of the best surviving examples of advanced polygonal masonry. The stone blocks used to construct the temple walls weigh anywhere from 100 to 150 tons, and yet they're fitted together with astonishing accuracy without the use of mortar or adhesive. The stones lock together like puzzle pieces with such tight joints that you can't slide a sheet of paper between them. In certain corners the blocks even seem to curve into one another. Today we'd rely on 3D modeling to design such a structure, but back then, they used nothing but skilled eyes and steady hands, and in many ways outperformed what we can do now with technology. It's a feat no one's fully explained. Number 3. Han Purple. About 2,800 years ago, Chinese artisans created an artificial pigment now called Han Purple. It appeared in murals, on ceramic surfaces, on jewelry, metals, and notably on the terracotta army. The color was so valued that it became a visual signature throughout ancient Chinese culture. Its recipe was so complicated that scientists couldn't replicate it until 1992, meaning the pigment had vanished from use for 1,800 years. Han purple is made from barium copper silicate, 
which requires heating barium above 100 degrees Celsius before mixing it with silica and copper in precise ratios. But what makes it truly unusual is what happens under LED light, it radiates strong infrared wavelengths. Quantum physicists found that when exposed to extreme cold and high magnetic fields, Han Purple's molecular structure flattens from three-dimensional into two. It remains one of the most technically complex compounds known in ancient history, and the fact that it was mass-produced 2,800 years ago is a stunning testament to the scientific precision of its creators. Number 2. Egypt Pyramids how Egypt's pyramids were created is one of the oldest technological puzzles in history, and it remains unsolved. No one, despite bold claims, has the answer. It's entirely likely that some unknown or forgotten form of engineering played a role in building these monumental structures, but one possible theory is worth looking at. Pulling huge stone blocks across dry desert sand on sleds would have been practically impossible, but if the sand were damp, it might have changed everything. That's because water can seep between grains of sand and create something called a liquid bridge, easing movement across the surface. For a limited time, the water also binds the grains together, keeping sleds from sinking. Ancient Egypt rarely lacked access to water, and a pharaoh likely wouldn't hesitate to allocate a vast water supply for such a critical task. Are we claiming this is definitely how they did it? Well no. But based on what we do know, it's a method that's hard to ignore. Number 1. Ancient Cloth with Purple Dye Archaeologists from Tel Aviv University have uncovered ancient textile fragments that offer the earliest known evidence of plant-based dyeing in the Levant. Found in the arid copper smelting zone of Timna Valley, the cloth remnants dating from the 13th to 10th centuries BCE originated at both an industrial site and a nearby temple. The study led by Dr. Erez Ben Yosef and Dr. Nama Sukenik revealed a sophisticated dyeing process using plants like madder and woad along with natural mordants such as alum. These dyes produced long-lasting reds and blues even in the region's harsh desert conditions. The presence of both wool and linen fabrics indicates a well-developed textile industry reliant on trade, skill, and hierarchy. Radiocarbon dating and gas chromatography confirmed the fabric's age and chemical makeup. The findings not only shed light on the Edomite society's craftsmanship but also suggest that they had far-reaching trade networks and a socially stratified culture much more advanced than back in the old days assumed for that era in this environment. If you've enjoyed watching this video be sure to like, share and subscribe, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon in the next 